Hi, this is Tai Chi and thank you for tuning in. You know, one place where we're always looking for change, always looking for to make a change in our lives is diets. Um, so many, especially girls, are struggling with finding the right diet, whether it's, be it's because we want to lose weight or feel healthier and have more energy. And so this is one area of our lives when we're already doing so much and we can do more. If we become aware of how this is also part of the change within, because when you are feeling physically well, then your soul is able to shine through. You're able to really live to your fullest and live your dreams out and show up in the world for others, to take care of others. Um, I'm really passionate about food and being from Croatia, you know, we, we love our food. Um, of course, every culture thinks of their food as best, but I'm not really talking about dishes as much as I'm talking about really, you know, good, nutritious, locally grown foods. When I was growing up there, we only ate what was in season, what uh, little farmers, local farmers brought into our big city. And so we even have a song that uh, we used to sing all the time in my, uh, at my home. Um, so it goes like this. Sira putra vrhnja mleka, jajca i krumpira, jajca i krumpira, jajca i krumpira. Sira putra vrhnja mleka, jajca i krumpira. Se to ide v beli Zagreb grad, se to ide v beli Zagreb grad. There's more to the song, but basically the, the song just lists all the dairy products, the fresh stuff that the farmers are bringing into the city. Um, 2006, I took um, a bunch of musicians with me to Croatia, a little village in the mountains, to perform. And there we were, we were um, served breakfast. And Denny, who's from Los Angeles, he looked at the breakfast, and the breakfast was tomato and a piece of bread and butter. And he said, to turn, turn to Matthew, my husband, he says, uh, I hope there's more because this is never going to do it. And he, but I said, you know, just, just, I'm sure that the hosts, they're very generous with food. I'm sure they know what they're doing. So um, Danny took a bite of t the tomato and he said, I couldn't believe he was just blown away. Forgot, had forgotten what the tomato should taste like. That's how this tomato was different from everything we, we, uh, we know these days. And Danny lives in Los Angeles, so he's good to He's used to um, having uh, good produce uh, available. And then on the other hand, um, in, when I first came to America, you know, I gained tons of weight um, immediately. And it was, my body was not used to the hormone-infused foods and size portions, the, portion, the, size of the sizes of the portions. And, um, you know, I, I was brought up, clean up everything on the plate, as a respect to those who didn't have food. And we didn't have, our family didn't have a lot of food. So I ate everything off of the American plate and I struggled. I really struggled. It was hard for me to find the balance. And most recently, I was dealing with some really persistent pain. I have a lot of, you know, these, these um, infl inflamed muscles in my upper, upper uh, back. And my chiropractor couldn't do anything, and the massage therapist said, I, it's so inflamed, I don't know what to do. So I went to my doctor, and he said, okay, you got to do some stretching, but in the meantime, here's some Valium. Well, I wasn't really satisfied with that, so instead, I went on this detox um, cleansing that um, my friend Linda Baer from Isaiah's Way Nutrition, um, that's a, a health and wellness coaching program, I took that cleansing program instead. And I was a little bit apprehensive. You know, I always thought if I ever do a cleanse, a detox, that I was going to be, I, was half, I would have to be like in the mountains of Switzerland, someplace where nobody would see me for a week, where I wouldn't have to be around my kids or my husband, and then I would do it. But what I experienced was not only that my pain went away, I identified the foods that were, that were um, aggravating and causing inflammation in my body. But I also had this huge shift inside of me, really on how I viewed the food, from things that I put in my, my, my mouth and my, my stomach just to get me through the day, to the food that nourishes and heals my body. So I am so excited to actually have Linda as my guest in this episode. I met Linda in Cincinnati 
at a local meetup of people who are passionate about their work and making a difference. I was really inspired by her story. My story started when my husband died of multiple complications due to obesity. And um, I also had health issues of my own. And so no, not having any place to reference or to go other than conventional doctors, um, we were really in a state of desperation. Linda felt helpless, resentful, and tired of being sick. She started working with neuropath, and after a year of learning about the healing properties of whole foods, Linda started to feel better for the first time in about 10 years. That really um, helped me to the point where it changed so much in my life that I wanted to help others, um, you know, feel the same way. Linda received her training as a health coach from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and studied with teachers like Andrew Weil and Deepak Chopra. She founded Isaiah's Way Nutrition, an online and in-person health and wellness coaching. We are, have been given a gift with our bodies and our, and their, our temples. And to be able to feed them natural and real food is what's going to fuel and give us the nutrients that we need to heal and energize our bodies. People come in and they go through a process from either four or six months and I really show them and help them build a resource that they can follow for the rest of their lives and coach them through, encourage them, support them through the changes that they need to make, um, that they want to make uh, as far as their goals um, to a better you know, healthy body and a better healthy life. So Linda, welcome. You're my very first guest and I'm really excited about it. And reason why I wanted you know, a health coach uh, for my first ghost and you especially, because we're all used to making the changes as far as food, at least trying, you know, trying a new diet, trying to change our bodies. And uh, we'll get into that in a moment. But first I wanna ask you, what is one of the boxes in your life that you transcended? Uh, well, growing up, I was really a shy, kind of confused child and um, grew up in, in a, a family that really didn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of um, continuity, um, which was fine. Um, I also kind of played the bad kid role. So really coming out of that and realizing that there was more to life than, you know, my hurts and my sorrows uh, growing up and really empowered me to um, just put myself out there and really make a decision that, um, you know, I don't have to do this alone, that I have resources and, and connections with people that really help me get to a place where I am, you know, partly where I am now. Yeah, it's beautiful. So you went from kind of like a sense of being powerless yes. to being empowered. Yes. And now you're empowering others to really take charge of their own lives. And was that a turning point in your own life, in your own story, where you, out of pain, you turned to, you, you shifted? Yeah, yes, very big shift. And it was in a time of my life, um, it was almost desperation. And it was, it was uh, a time when um, I also had some uh, health issues of my own. And so no reference to what could really help me. And so once I started to be uh, more aware that I could make changes and there were resources out there, it really helped me. It, it really helped me make a difference in my life. And you talk about resources and really looking at, looking for uh, others who can help us. And that's what you know, this show is really all about, to, to connect us all and to offer tools to each other and to really say, you're not alone. I'm right. not alone. Right. Linda is not alone. We are, and we're all on the journey. Mm -hmm. This change within that we're making in our lives is a daily shift. Mm -hmm. So as far as diet goes, so how do we do that? Um, is it once in a life shift or is it a daily shift? It is a daily shift, really. And one of the things and one of the tools, as you said, um, that that I actually took advantage of was having somebody come in my home and really help me clean out the things and, and kind of take stock of what I was doing 
um, and, and really the feeding, you know, how I was feeding my body and um, the, the lack of nutrients actually. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I do for people is exactly the same thing. I'll go into their home and I'll help them take stock of what they have and get, you know, bring in the good and get rid of the bad in, in a sense. Why is it that America is such a, a plentiful nation, bountiful, uh, you know, abundant? Um, there's a disconnect with, pe with food. There is a disconnect with food because, it, you know, um, when the convenient foods came on the scene, we kind of never look back. So I really help people understand and reclaim the, the, the real food um, into their lives and, uh, you know, stop eating out of a box eat what comes out of the ground and what God intended us to eat. Oh, yes. Isn't that such a simple concept? It is. <laughs> it's very simple, actually. But if I, if I make a change and commit to chopping my vegetables and eating fruits and eating really what comes out of earth, uh, does that mean that I can't eat chocolate or truffles anymore, mm -hmm. ever? <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I mean, you, you pick your battles, and um, it, this is not about depriving oneself. Um, it's about finding out what's best for your body. Each of us have our own lifestyle, our own food needs that are unique to, our, to ourselves. And that's really what the coaching progress or process is about. It's about finding out what um, is best for you. Almost like the saying, uh, one food um, you know, can be a poison for you, but another food could be, or that food could be, you know, really help me out. Um, and so... Yeah, that, that's uh, wonderful. Yes, I mean, uh, a lot of the diets are all across the board that work for everybody. Right. But we are individuals. And we're all unique. Exactly. We're all different. And so, so that's what you do. You take people on their individual journeys and help them to find out, to reconnect with food. Exactly. Um, and I teach them about different foods. You know, what is a carbohydrate? What is a protein? That kind of thing. But we don't dwell on that. We don't count calories. We find out what is going to serve their body the best way. What's going to make them feel better? And if they have any digestive issues or sensitivities to foods, then that comes up. And so they're able to find out what is the best for them, what's going to fuel and heal and then um, give them the health and ultimately their happiness. Yes, I have to tell you, I'm so grateful for your detox program that I took. I will forever be grateful for what you have done for me and I hope that many of our viewers will take advantage of your website and all your wisdom and, and your beautiful heart that you you bring into it. Because um, in, in our conversations you mentioned that food is only our secondary nourishment. Yes, yes. And it's really the... The secondary uh, nourishment and the and the and the energy, um, really the our primary what I call primary food, has to do more with lifestyle. So if we're paying attention to things like um, our career, you know what's best. Of, what do we really want to do with our what's our passion, um, our spirituality, our relationships are really you know we need to be paying attention to that. And then um, also our physical body, you know, exercise. How are we taking that? And then, of course, that brings in the whole nutrition piece. Um, so that's what I call primary food. That's what's going to feed us, um, but it really doesn't come on a plate. Yes, and that's what I call life awakened. Mm -hmm. um, when we are fully awakened and, and live in that alignment with our purpose, with who we are inside, with how we transcend all that life has put, the life situations that we deal with. Yes. Um, so is, describe one last question. What is your awaken moment, awaken life look like? Well, I, I feel that it is, um, that I don't have to do this by myself and that I can enjoy and do and tap into my passions that are gonna help others. And that's what really fuels me. I mean, not just the food that I eat because I have tons of energy and I know it's from the food that I eat, but really what fuels me and energizes me is the love of others and helping others to find what their, you know, what their thing is um, and what their health and happiness is all about. Um, so I do appreciate, um, you know, you inviting me to uh, come and tell my story. Absolutely, thank you. 
So I was thinking, what food-related song can I do in this episode? And as you post your comments about food and how food has made change in your life or what changes have you made in your life to nourish your body um, and, and help your health, uh, do post what's your favorite food song, something that talks about food or, I don't know, let's just, let's just share that as well. Um, one of the songs that I love, um, apart from my Croatian food song, <laughs> um, is a lullaby, the Yiddish lullaby that I put on my uh, lullaby album and I sang to my babies, when, my boys, when they were babies. And their baby's cradle in the night Stands a goat so soft and snowy white The goat will trot to the market To bring you wonderful things He'll bring you raisins and Sleep, my little one, sleep. I particularly like the fact that the song talks about raisins and almonds, not about cookies and candy, which is always good to teach children um, with. Another song, beautiful song, well, there's all the fun songs, you know, every, every, all the songs about sugar, there's plenty of those. And then there's, my troubles, my like lemon drops. Are those lemon drops like in candy lemon drops or lemon drops from lemon? I don't know. Do you know? And then, of course, one of the most favorite um, songs. Oh, one other thing. When I prepare my food at home, I put on jazz music. I don't know. It's something very uplifting and inspiring to listen to good Gershwin song or Ella Fitzgerald singing, The Way You Hold Your Knife. You know, it's kind of great. Anyway, so this is the song. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. Sing along with me. Tell her to make a cambric shirt Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme Without no seams, no needlework Then she'll be a true love of mine And as you chop your vegetables and prepare your food Remember this song and go heavy on parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and less on salt and oil and butter, and you'll be just fine. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.